Alrighty, what is up everybody? Void here with EZRP and I'm going to show you how to make a quick 3x3 binary locking system. I am the original developer of this and people don't seem to understand how to do it like this guy, Fallout Child. So, I'm just going to make a quick video that hopefully explains this better than you can see it from my point of view and how I am wiring this up. So, you're going to need a few things. You're going to need, um, go to your gates you're going to need nine equal chips because that's how many buttons you have. And this is version 1.0 of the binary locking system. This isn't like my final thing that has intrusion detection and prevention. Um, this is just the very, very basic one. And notice I'm, I'm snapping onto these points here. Uh, here at Fallout, I'm actually making a video, so I'm not going to respond to anything right now. So, okay. Um, anyway, so you can hold E to snap onto those X marks that you're seeing, if you didn't know that. Okay, anyway, you're going to place those nine chips just like that. Now you're going to go to your logic category folder here, and you're going to need, for this thing, you're going to need um, three. The first one is for the first eight chips, or uh, first six chips. You don't do eight because you need at least two chips, so I just six is easier. Um, but you're going to need two of them to get all nine chips total. And then a third one is going to be uh, to basically... Um, combine those all into one thing. This is this chip is going to say uh, all the buttons are the values that they're supposed to be equal to to initiate you know, the, the door or whatever you're going to have this do. So now you're going to get an OR chip and what this is is you're going to use this to wire the you know that AND of the chip that you see there over here and the inside button that you're going to use to open up the door or whatever or a number pad output if you want or input number pad input if you're going to control with your number pad um, <clears throat> you'll see this all here once I get done next go to time and you're going to need to delay and what this is is it holds the door open for a certain amount of time so and that's actually it for that. For the gates, you're going to need a number pet output. And whatever button your fading door is going to be wired to, mine's going to be wired to 8. And you're also going to need something called a constant value. This is literally just a, a gate kind of thing that holds variables. I have a whole bunch of variables here. All you need is 0, 1, and 5. In this case, 5 is how long the door is going to stay open for. The rest of these values, like the 10, 1,000, 10,000. That's not allowed, you know. Making a video. Anyway, <laughs> a lot of cancer on the server right now. And next, you're going to need dynamic buttons. Make sure that the toggle is on and your value on is 1 and your value off is 0. You're just going to place them in an array like this. In an array like that. Okay. So, if you're still with me, we can start wiring up right now. So, first off, I'm going to teach you a little something. If you don't know, you can multi-wire. So, if you hold shift, we're going to wire all these sets. We're just going through. We're just left-clicking once on all these sets. We're going to wire this to the output of the delay. So, they get reset when the code is initiated. Next, you're going to wire the CLK of the delay to the output of the uh, AND. The AND that is going to be controlling these ANDs. So, the delay, we're going to put that to 1. This is just kind of like a, a preventative measure, which you don't even need for this build, but I just do it for in good conscience for if you guys figure out or want to figure out how to do the version uh, 3.7 is what I'm at right now of the door. And then wire the hold to that 5 of the constant value. That's how long it's going to hold the value of the door being open. Like, that's how long the door is going to be open. Next, you're going to wire the number pad output to the out of the delay. Next, you're going to wire the A of the AND to the out of the equal, B to the next equal, to the next, to the next. And sometimes you get a double click like that. You just press R and you it uh, releases that. Next, next, so that's six. This next, we're going to go from the A of the next AND to the next one down. Next one, next, and then the A of this AND to the out of that AND, and the B of this AND to the out of that AND. And 
again, a double click there with a C, so you can just put that back to where it's supposed to be. <laughs> All right, now the OR. You're gonna wire that to the out of the AND that controls those ANDs. Now, if you did this right, which it is not doing right for whatever reason. Oh yeah, because we haven't set up the equals here. Here, we're gonna wire the A to its corresponding button. And you just do that through all of them. Oh, sometimes it likes to reset and go to B. Make sure it's A, it'll be easier in the long run. As you can see, I'm just wiring the A's of the equals to its corresponding button. Next is the easy part. We're going to do a little multi-wire thing here. This is where you're going to hold shift and wire the B's of these equals, whatever equals you want to equal to the, like, the value of what the button is supposed to be on or off. So in this case, we're gonna make a code. It's gonna be 111000111. Very, very simple. So, wire the Bs of the top row and the Bs of the bottom row to the one of the constant value. And then the Bs of the middle row to the zero of the constant value. And there you go. 111000111. And after a one second delay, it goes on and it holds it for five seconds and it resets to zero. Like that. There you go. That is the binary locking system version 1.0. Enjoy.